So this is the introduction to the pipeline. And uh, I'll just go sort of give you a, a very quick overview of the pipeline as a whole, and then uh, some of the other presentations can go into some of the details. Um, the basic philosophy, just to for those who haven't played with it much yet, the idea is to use the same code base for all the different instruments on web. So NERCAM, NERUS, MIRI, NERUSPAC, um, all the different modes, um, at least where possible. Uh, there are, of course, some mode specific differences like imaging and spectroscopy. Uh, the basic idea is it's easy to maintain. Uh, we can take advantage of all the different teams' uh, strengths in terms of input to the pipeline. And also, we're using uh, all the best algorithms from the community. So this is not just internal to ST. We take it from the instrument teams external in the community and also mode specific people. And, and now sort of expanding that to the general community. So the overall goal of this is to, to have the best algorithms in the pipeline and to have it continually updated too. So this slide shows you now the overall structure of the pipeline. So there are basically three stages to the pipeline, as we call it. Um, stage one is basically what we call uh, detector one. All the exposures will go through that. This is sort of single exposure calibrations, mostly separate ramps before you combine them, before you do the upper ramp fitting. Um, stage two is still single exposure, but everything coming into the stage two pipelines has basically been ramp fitted. And I'll tell you about the ramp fitting in a moment. And then stage three is when all the individual exposures have been ramp fit, and now you combine them into uh, combined multi-exposure products. So let's take a look at it in a bit of detail. So stage one, all the exposures go through this. Now, this diagram, you don't have to absorb it in detail. You can look at the presentation online. Um, the basic point is it goes through sort of what you would think of as detector level calibration. So uh, the, the vertical columns here show all the different uh, modes for different instruments. Um, so NERCAM basically is just all the NERCAM data go through everything. Um, NERSPEC, NERUS, FGS, TSO means time series observing. And MIRIs and TSOs on the, the right-hand side here. There are a couple of differences in, in MIRI compared to the near hour instruments, just based on detector physics. But basically stage one takes you through things like saturation checks. Uh, it does things like supervised subtraction. Um, linearity correction, dark current, all sort of on a per group uh, basis or per ramp. Um, linearity corrections, persistence corrections, dark current, and jump detection. And the final steps are in stage one, really, is when you've now applied all these calibrations to all the individual ramps, let's call them, or groups, and you then do a ramp fit. So let's just have a little graphic about what the data of the data actually looks like, what, what the stage one pipeline does. Um, when you get your JWST data, you can specify that each of the individual reads uh, gets grouped into uh, combined groups. And this happens on board the spacecraft. So when you put your APT files together, you can tell it how many frames you want per group. And so on board, all the different frames or reads get averaged into single groups. And each of these single groups is then downloaded. And so a given integration will consist of one or more of these groups, typically. Uh, and a given exposure can be one or more integrations. So this entire length down the horizontal here shows you for a single exposure. And it can have one or more integrations. And each integration consists of a bunch of groups. Then each of these groups is then fit. So here are a couple of things that can happen during, during the ramp uh, that are fairly typical. Uh, if you have a cosmic ray hitting during one of these readouts, let's say, then the entire group that that cosmic ray was in would be affected. So you get sort of a jump in the, in the accumulated signal. Um, another thing that can happen would be that very bright objects can saturate. So you have a number of different reads, uh, a number of different groups, and then at some point it saturates, and then everything just has a fairly flat signal after that. So these are two different things that can happen during the, um, during the upper amp sequence. And the, the Cal Web Detector 1, the Stage 1 pipeline, basically takes care of detecting these jumps and maintaining, let's say in this case, two different uh, ramps on either side of the jump. If you have multiple cosmic rays, you can have multiple ramps. <laughs> and so multiple slopes are going to be fit. And same thing for saturation. It will basically give you a valid slope for everything up to the saturation point. And so everything beyond that uh, doesn't get included. So at the end of stage one, you basically have the last step in stage one is to fit all the 
groups. And so you have basically a count rate image coming out of stage one. And that then is input to stage two. So here I show stage two and then stage three for imaging. And there'll be another one for spectroscopy in a moment. So when you start imaging uh, for stage two, it basically starts with like a count rate image. So if you've ever worked on HST data, this is like a an FLT or an FLC of fits file. It's basically counts or counts per second. And stage two then applies things like background subtraction. It applies things that are more physical, like flat field correction and flux calibration. Uh, and then at the end of stage two, you get a, a single exposure kind of a rectified product. Then these get put into stage three for imaging, which does things like uh, a bit like in Astro Drizzle, if you ever used HST data. It, can uh, refine the WSS, it can basically shift exposures around. Uh, it'll match their backgrounds, it'll do outlier detection. Uh, and then it'll ultimately combine these into a single combined mosaic uh, in stage three. And it then runs a source catalog on that. And so at the end of stage three for imaging, you basically get a, a combined mosaic from all the exposures in a given observation group, and you get a catalog along with that. Same, and, and here's a little um, graphic just showing you an example of what this looks like. So um, stage one is sort of, uh, again, your single exposure. Um, stage two sort of, uh, sort of calibrates all these different exposures. And then stage three takes them all and combines them into a single combined mosaic. Uh, and this particular example is Mary. Uh, we thought we'd, I thought I'd give uh, Mary some, uh, <laughs> some visibility. Carl Gordon put these together for the previous slides uh, last year, so I figured I'd keep it in. But the basic result out of all this is you get a, a nice mosaic out of that, and you get a catalog to go along with that. Um, similar for spectroscopy, uh, once you've done your stage one calibration for spectroscopic data, it goes into stage two for individual exposure um, cow wave spectroscopy, and then stage three. And I won't go through all these steps in detail. But they basically, in concept, they apply things like flat field corrections, or sub, um, subtraction of backgrounds, uh, extraction of spectros sort of the 1D spectroscopy products. Uh, a lot of differences happen here between different spectroscopic modes. So Nirspec has shutters, uh, Neris and NIRCAM just has slitless wide field spectra, like Grism basically. And so different steps get triggered here depending on what kind of spectroscopic data you have. And the same thing here for CalWave Spec 3. You have basically then combined multiple exposures for a given uh, pointing, and these are then extracted into uh, either 1D spectra or 2D uh, or 3D cubes even. So even the IFU data goes through part of this as well. And here's an example just showing you what the IFU data look like once they've come out of this uh, CalWave Spec 2 and Spec 3 stage of the pipeline. There are a couple of other modes that I'll just mention here briefly. Um, we have coronography data. So the stage one and stage two look the same uh, for all the coronography and also for the NERIS AMI, the, uh, basically the uh, interferometry mode of NERIS. But the only differences are in stage three, where coronography you have, basically you can take a stack of uh, coronographic data and uh, assemble that in a slightly different way to, to what you do in imaging mosaics. And uh, here I'll give you just a little example showing how this looks in coronography data. So if you have a target, it makes a direct image. You have multiple exposures on this target. So each of them is basically tracking the PSF differently. And so you end up with a co-added uh, target image and then also a co-added reference star image that's sort of done in the same way. And then the coronography pipeline basically subtracts that reference star from the target. And in this example, you see basically a, a residual uh, that's around the, the target, which in this case would be due to a planet that you're trying to detect, for instance. And finally, TSO data, time series. Typically, this is um, there is an imaging mode for time series observing, so NeuroCAM imaging is captured here. But most of the time series observing modes are in uh, spectroscopy, so either NeuroCAM GRISM or NERIS SOS, which is a single object uh, slitless spectroscopy mode. Um, or Nerspec Bright Object Time Series, or Miri LRS Slitless. And so these modes, either imaging or spectroscopy, you basically have very bright targets which are observed in time series. And the stage three pipeline basically extracts uh, either photometry, uh, if you're doing imaging, or spectroscopy, if you're doing the spectroscopic modes. And you end up with a, with a series of products for time series. It basically are your spectroscopy 
uh, products, for example, uh, as a function of time or imaging, uh, depending on what mode you had. So that's basically the pipeline uh, summary. And then in terms of running it, so when we reference the pipeline, we refer to both basically that which runs in the STSCI uh, data management system here at the Institute. But you can run it yourself. Uh, you can fetch the pipeline. I'll show you the links at the end. Um, there are default parameters for all the steps. So if you run it without changing anything, you basically get the same products as you would for the STSCI pipeline. But you can download and run the pipeline locally. You can change the defaults to any parameters you like. Some of the other notebooks here will show you how to do that. Um, and you can even pause it and insert your own custom steps and then restart as needed. And that brings us to data analysis tools. So the, the slight distinction here is the pipeline runs on all data with no human interaction except for changing defaults. Um, data analysis tools, which I think are a different webinar series, um, basically they require more human interaction. And there's some overlaps. For example, some parts of the pipeline, like tweak reg, for instance, if you want to adjust your pointings, you can rerun that interactively and change your parameters. Um, just a final couple of words on how we develop the pipeline. Um, the baseline pipeline basically is aimed at producing usable science products, meeting the requirements, all the algorithms are defined, and that is sort of our pipeline at launch. Um, now we're really in the enhanced phase, so we're improving the pipeline, producing it with the best products that we can, and this will basically continue for the life of the mission. Um, we learn from past efforts, Hubble, Spitzer, Herschel, other instruments. Um, there's a fairly big group. Uh, most of the folks here, we've got a whole bunch of people from the Institute who are involved, um, people from external instrument teams, and anyone else, if you, if any of you want to join the calibration working group meetings, just drop me an email uh, if you want to contribute code. Um, we've got algorithm input. Most of this process was kind of before launch. I think right now we're really more in the phase of taking inputs from external teams and if anyone in the community wants to contribute an algorithm that you think can do better, um, let us know and we'd be happy to include it. And last slide, more information. Um, there's a JDOCS page that sort of gives you the high level overview. Um, detailed documentation is on Read the Docs, so this will tell you all about how the code works in detail. And then if you want to download the software, you can click here on the GitHub page and 